Thank you, guys. I don't know how, how silly you people are. Um, okay, that's two entrances. Um, I just want to recap. I don't know if you were paying attention, but when I came out, I went like this. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that my, one of my best friends, Mark Weissman, and I used to lose it over when we got into an elevator. There would always be somebody coming in, and they would have a slight little stumble, and we would just completely fall apart. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... Uh... A little trouble with the edge there. Well, it was very high. Yeah, there's, that, there's stairs over there. I no, I didn't know. Those. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, this is an absurd <laughs> thing because we're here to talk about uh, a movie in which we talk about oh. a movie. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> really silly. Yeah. I've got nothing. <laughs> It's been great, thank you. Yeah. Maybe we should just go, anybody want to ask me any questions? Yes. Bill, will, Bill will go around with the microphone. <laughs> and ask Hi there, hey, how's it going out here? Hi there, where are you from? Tarzana. Tarzana. Yeah, any questions for Dave Gold? Anything, sir? How long are you in town? <laughs> Dave, Dave, he's asking how long are you in town? These are big friends of ours. These are people we know. These are these are guilty people. I'm sorry. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt Thatcher, put your hand up. There he is. He's one of the most directors and writers. Next to him, David Silverman. Yeah. That be a one. This is for my wife, Christina. Hey. <laughs> anyway, this is getting... You're all our friends, I think. Um, any more questions? Is it, we, we, we don't really have anything to say. We're not going to really talk to us. Uh, because we kind of did a lot of that. Here's a question. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, I'll come right down to you. Hey there, what's your name? My name's Jody. Uh, hey, Jody. Hi, Dave. Uh, when Don used to prank you, did you ever prank him back? Oh, did I ever prank <laughs> Don back? He must have heard the story already. No, I haven't. Um, I have an ultimate Don Celine story, which was uh, Don used to, and I used to scare each other all the time. And, uh, you know, it finally reached the point where I thought, I'm going to win this. I'm going to scare Don so badly that it kills him. <laughs> and then, I will win. <laughs> Don had a pattern. Every day he came to Muppets uh, at about noon and worked until about four o'clock. And then he would go somewhere, and he would never tell us where. And then he would come back around eight o'clock, when most we were usually gone, and work till midnight. That way he could work undisturbed. So I came back to the shop around 7 p.m. one night, and I, I got myself under, well, I have to tell you, when, when you came into the shop, there was an elevator at the bottom. So you would come in the, the door from the street and lock it behind you. And then you would take the elevator up to the fourth floor. And when you got in there, it was all dark. And you would have to go into a little tiny bathroom. It was this wide. Just had a toilet and a little tiny sink and a circuit breaker box. And so you would go into this bathroom in the dark, flip the master switch, and everything would come on. The air conditioners would work, the, the lights would come on, music would start to play. And uh, so I came in before Don came back and got myself, I sat on the toilet, and I covered myself with black cloth. <laughs> you know, that black duty and it's just like black velour. And uh, when Don came in, he would reach for that switch and there would just be a human hand already there. <laughs> the electricity would just flow through his body of its own accord, and he would die. <laughs> and I would win. So, 
Eight o'clock comes, Don's not there yet. And I'm sweating, it's summertime, it's 95 degrees, 95% humidity, I'm just dying under this cloth, thinking, when is he gonna come? It's 8.30, no Don. Nine o'clock, no Don. 9.30, 10 o'clock. At some point I started thinking, what if he doesn't come back tonight? What if, and he didn't come back, and he survived. That, that's that story. That's a, that ultimate Don story. That was, that was lovely. Very sweet. Anyway, just, just, just find people with questions, Bill. Yeah. Uh, okay, what is your name, okay? Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, super yeah um, did you ever have a day at work where you did something so embarrassing everyone wouldn't let you forget? Mm. Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can remember one that was way back on the Muppet Show. By the way, when you ask questions, just because Bill's holding the mic doesn't mean you can't ask him a question. <laughs> if you want, I'll come down and hold the mic and you can ask him. But I, we were doing this thing, uh, and Gonzo had a line in the backstage set which where he was supposed to say, stardom is mine. And I, I kept saying, freedom is mine. <laughs> take after take. It was one of those situations like where Jim was endlessly patient, and he would just, we just did it over and over. And I'd get to this big moment, I'd say, freedom is mine! <laughs> and uh, I, I never lived it down. I, I mean, finally, I got it right, but it took like 20 takes. I just couldn't, I could not say stardom. Uh, it's, not, it's not a very good story. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's not, maybe ask Bill a question. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question about Jerry? Do you remember Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> Very well. I didn't hear the last year. Your question was, was any thoughts about talk about Jerry? Yeah, and his legacy, friendship? Your friendship with him? Yeah, you know, and him uh, as a father. Well, I, I could say that Jerry was the coolest. <sighs> yeah. Jerry was the coolest cat I knew. And, yes. uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I introduce my wife? <laughs> That's Christina. That's Christina. Uh, the coolest, coolest guy I ever met. I, um, I guess I always talk about this one opportunity that I had with Jerry, among many, but really kind of the first, where I, uh, I got to work directly with him. So some of the Muppet characters, as you probably see, uh, are they have rotted hands, so their hands are operated by arm rods. Some have live hands, uh, so that means sometimes that the puppeteer that's doing the head and the character of the body is also doing the left hand, and then another person is doing the right hand. So there's a, that coordination going on. And in this case, it was on Muppet Treasure Island, and there was a character named Blind Pew that, that Jerry did. A phenomenal character who's blind. Uh, and I don't know who paired us up, I imagine it was probably Brian, but I did the hands, I ended up doing both hands for that character, for Jerry. And, you know, it was my first movie, and I was very excited, and, uh, and I said, Jerry, yeah, you know what, yeah, I think it'd be great if, you know, in this moment, I did that, and I could maybe, you know, grab this, and, and, and as you're moving this way, I could grab this little thing and turn that, would that be okay? And he was like, do whatever you want, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he just trusted people, you know. He, uh, I think he just had this innate sense of enjoying working with people and, and letting them find things the way that, you know, by example, through him, to just be cool and let it, let it happen, see what happens. Yeah, but he knew he was working with a real talent. And oh, Jay! <laughs> now, I'm now I'm gonna cry. When when <clears throat> when uh, Blind Pew was talking to um, 
um, what's his name? Who was it? Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, Billy was, Billy had his hair in ringlets, and uh, Brian Pugh just took one of the ringlets and just kind of <laughs> pulled it down. And it was so perfect. It was, you know, it was just two master performers at work. It was just such a great little, little I didn't scene. ask either, which was fun. I just didn't ask if I could, I just did it. But yeah, Jerry, Jerry loved it. And that's what I mean, he knew who he was working with. So. Have a question? Yeah. Are we picking two different people? Is that <laughs> yeah. I, I love when the Muppets do stuff like Muppet Treasure Island or Muppet Christmas Carol where they're taking these classic stories and assigning the characters to roles. I was just curious, did the puppeteers ever get any say, or was, was there discussion with you guys, like Gonzo would be Charles Dickens, or was that all decided long before? Well, did you ever hear the question? Yeah. yeah. Um, those things were usually the, done by the writers ahead of time, because we were away working on something else at that at the time when something new was being written. Um, but I knew Jerry Jewell very well, and the reason that he chose Gonzo to be Dickens was because he, we were just very close, and he had watched me develop and change over the years, and, um, and that probably informed his idea that uh, maybe this was a way to get Dickensian narrative prose from the book into the movie without having a narrator. So he thought, well, you know, Dave's more soulful now, maybe. Why, why can't Gonzo be more soulful too when he can do this dialogue? And I loved the opportunity, I really loved it, because of, uh, to get to say those words was an honor. Uh, yes, in the back, young lady, right? Yes. Uh, Bill, I was just wondering, how did you get to work with Jim after meeting him uh, for so many fights? What was your journey like? Uh, well, you know, I sadly never did get to work with Jim. Um, I, the funny thing is that that summer, well, I worked two summers at Sesame Place, but the second summer, I met a guy named Brian Henson, who was also 17 years old, <laughs> and uh, we both were working in the theme park uh, in the summer, and we got to know each other and became friends, and to make a long story short, uh, we kept in touch over the years, and um, I was living in New York when Jim passed away. Uh, I met him a couple other times uh, in New York, um, but I never got to work next to him. The amazing thing to me is, even though I never did get to work with him, uh, I feel like I am that close to maybe knowing what it felt like by working with these people, with Dave and Frank and Steve and Jerry and. Fran, all of these performers and the people in the workshop who knew him and all the stories that I've heard about him over the years. Um, and then, you know, uh, being honored just to be able to do some of his characters, to, to take on some of those characters. And through these stories, <laughs> trying to understand what makes some of these characters tick that he created, you know. Uh, so I didn't get to work right next to him, um, but I feel like I, I am one of these guys. That's really nice. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. started out that way, and um, Jim built the original Gonzo for an earlier show called the Santa Claus Switch, it was a special, and he, Jim sort of cast me and that puppet to do this character in, in the first season of The Muppet Show, Gonzo, and uh, they wanted him to be more excited, you know, they kept saying, get him more excited, and I said, well, he looks so sad, his eyes were very downcast, kind of half-lidded. So uh, at the end of the season, I said, Jim, you know, we're going back to New York, and I was going to go back and work in this shop. I said, can I build a new Gonzo with an eye mechanism? And he said, sure, go ahead. So I did, and that became the prototype for the one we use now. But he has the capability of getting excited, so it wasn't just a 
you know, a downtrodden loser. The second season, he was a kind of an upbeat loser. <laughs> Back corner. About a billion. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Let's see. Oh, there's a lovely one. Uh, you know, when the Dark Crystal and Labyrinth came out, they didn't. They weren't met with huge box office, so it was a big disappointment because each one took about five years to make, and Jim was really discouraged by it. We met for lunch once over at the uh, Bel Air Hotel. Uh, I was in town. He was in town, and we had lunch. And afterward. We, uh, we sort of said goodbye out by the parking lot, and uh, he turned to me and he said, uh, you know what my favorite thing about everything we've done? And I said, what? And he said, it's when we laughed. And what he was talking about was we would lose it at various times. We'd get very tired working, and after a 10 or 12 or 13 hour day, we start to get giddy. And if we were trying to work, we might somebody might fluff a line and somebody else would start laughing. Frank would crumble. And then pretty soon we were just useless for about 20 minutes until we could recover. <laughs> and that's what Jim's favorite thing of all was, is with those moments when we just got so tired that we couldn't stop laughing. So that was, that was a, a great moment. Yeah. <laughs> You pick somebody. Okay. I'm going to go with Bill's strategy of picking people that we don't can't see very well. So I'm choosing people back near where that spotlight is. I see one. I'm pointing right at you. I don't know if you can tell. Your hand is up. Wave your hand. That's you. Yeah. What's on our bucket list? I want to know, before you take a comment, what, what do you want to do? You've done imaginable things, but what's something you want to do that you haven't done? Either one of you, what, what do you want to do? I want to cuddle up with Tony Bennett. <laughs> Watch an old movie, have some ice cream, maybe a little side of, you know, heading out the yacht there. <laughs> And then just wake up cuddling again. <laughs> I, want, I want to do that with you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Way back there. White blouse. That's it. Waving. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, we just have questions from people. <laughs> yeah. We just, thanks, thanks for coming. We, we prefer their voice. I mean, the thing is that none of us can do what the others can do. So the minute somebody else does a character, I think the rest of us are in awe. Because we, we couldn't have done that exact thing. Yeah. I don't know how it, come, how it happens exactly that certain people get certain characters. I mean... Well, Jim used to do the casting. He right. would, used to ask, just ask somebody if they'd try yeah. something. Yeah. Um, Sometimes workshopping things come out of it, but no, I don't think there's ever been any character that I wish somebody hadn't done. <laughs> well, it should have been mine. You know? Kirk, Kirk Thatcher actually once came up with a character in the early 90s called Mr. Poodle Pants. Yeah. And he was sort of um, Ed a, an Ed Wynn character, and he, and he had sort of like a clown outfit with pants that would go up and down. It was very crazy. He just looked like this. Talked like Ed Wynn, and Kirk could do him. None of the rest of us could really carry it off. I think Steve Whitmire did, did Mr. Poodle Pants yeah. for a while, yeah. but really it needed Kirk doing it. And Kirk was a writer and not a puppeteer, so Mr. Poodle Pants never really took off. <laughs> yeah, neither one of us really wanted to do it. <laughs> but we don't like Kirk. So that's, we don't, if he thinks of something, we just don't want to do it. Yes, sir. Um, you guys are obviously a part of a legacy that is uh, so uh, 
prevalent to the, the love of puppetry and maybe you've reinvigorated a lot of uh, the love of puppetry for people um, outside of Europe. Do you guys have any favorite uh, bodies of work puppetry related that are not Muppets or sets mm. that you guys can recommend? <coughs> That's a good question. Did you understand that? He spoke in English, yes? Yeah. <laughs> he asked us if we have any bodies of puppeteering work outside of our own that we like. Huh? Your favorite non-Muppet puppet. Yeah, non-Muppet puppets that we like. I have lots of them from my childhood. I just loved, I loved Beanie and Cecil. I loved uh, Howdy Doody. Mortimer Snur. <laughs> oh my god. Edgar Bergen was a brilliant entertainer. All, all three of those characters, you know, Effie Clinker, Mortimer Snare, Charles McCarthy, and we had him on the show, and, and he gave a little private show for us. He sat in a little chair, and we were six feet away, all of the performers, just absolutely sitting there with our mouths hanging open, because, you know, we've known him since childhood, but to see him working and to realize, oh my God, what a brilliant performer, what brilliant timing, his intonation, his voices, his characters, he was just an absolute, just a tour de force. Yeah. Uh, and Finger Wences. <laughs> yeah, we had him on the show too, and that was a treat. And another brilliant guy. So clever. Uh, yes, sir, right here. The Muppets and music have always gone together. I'd love to hear stories from both you guys of the first time that you had to sing in character. Ah! <laughs> the first time? <laughs> okay, so I'm not a singer. Anybody, <laughs> anybody who's been near my shower can vouch for that. It's true. Really? <laughs> The very first show I was ever in, the, the Muppets did, was the Muppet Valentine special. And one day we were going to go record music for it, and I had some things I had to sing. And I was terrified. And Jim came by the workshop to sort of check in on everybody's progress on our projects. And then he said, hey, I'm going down to the, you know, to the recording studio. Do you want to catch a taxi with me? So I got in the elevator with him, and he just rubbed his hands together and said, oh, it's so much fun to sing with a band. It's just so great to be in a recording studio. And I'm going, ha, 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 ha. I was absolutely terrified. And somehow I faked my way through it. And I've been doing it ever since. Uh, I don't remember the first time. Um, but I, I, I think probably the most memorable time, because it was pretty early for me with working with the Muppets, but uh, when I got to sing with Tony Bennett, um, again, cuddling a lot. <laughs> now, uh, and uh, that was nerve-wracking as could possibly be. And, and we sang uh, Shaking the Blues Away on, on Muppets Tonight in one, one of the episodes. And we were rehearsing, and he had his band there, and we were rehearsing, and, and we finished this kind of chorus of the song, and we stopped, and he went, you're not too bad. <laughs> I say, I it. <laughs> There's something to tell you about musically that uh, you have not seen yet. It's coming out soon. Our our boss, Devin McClellan, is here. <laughs> and uh, she runs the Muppet uh, studio. studio. <laughs> and, and it's kept the Muppets going. Uh, we just, we just, so I guess almost the final cut of uh, Carpool Karaoke that we did. <laughs> it is really fun. It has a little more post-production to do. I don't know when it's, you know, do you know when it's going to be up? It'll be online pretty soon. Uh, they have to do the final mix and a couple other things, but... Uh, yeah, that was fun. It's a 21-minute piece with a whole bunch of characters in the, in the Dr. Teeth and the Mayhem can we, say who, can we say who's with them? Are we allowed to say who's with them? Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Bennett. No, no, no. <laughs> Jason Sudeikis. Uh, uh, yeah, Jason Sudeikis is driving, and he's so funny. <laughs> he's an amazing talent. He can, he can slip in little interjections into a conversation <laughs> without talking over anybody, yeah. but he just gets them in there. He's, 
there's something so skilled about him, and he's so funny and likable. Honest, completely honest. Yeah. Just straight out. Oh, great. It's really fun. Like, you know, I think you'll enjoy it. Anybody else? Yes, over here. Pink. Well, I was on that movie, but I didn't really have any scenes with him, and I, so I didn't particularly interact, so I, I can't say that I have anything first person to offer, but if anybody has access to YouTube, all you have to do is search for David Bowie Underground Recording Session. Who, who's seen that? Anybody seen that? Just go on YouTube. Yeah, one guy. <laughs> Um, go on YouTube and search for that, David Bowie Underground Recording Session. And you see him in the studio with uh, Eric Martin and a whole bunch of uh, gospel singers, some of whom are celebrity gospel singers, I mean, just amazing talents. And you just see David Bowie knowing every single harmony in the song. And just gently kind of, it was an amazing talent, but just gently guiding everybody into the recording. And of course, the recording just sounds like this rousing, uplifting gospel piece. It's so good. But that's a fun thing to look at. That's kind of, kind of a way of answering your question without even answering it. Please to me. You've been now, Dave. You've been somebody. Uh -huh. um, how about back there? I could tell you, but you probably would have to kill me. That'll remain a mystery. Sorry. Well, maybe I should tell. He would, if it was me, he would tell. But he's so mean. The mystery is better than the story. <laughs> Next question. I'm oh, sorry. How about, there you go, waving your hand. The movie Elephants is with you. Just had painted all these pipes uh, in the studio. And I'm wondering what was the initial reaction from the maintenance people? <laughs> <laughs> what question was what, were, what did the maintenance people think of those pipes in the NBC closet? Uh, first of all, it happened before my time, so I hadn't gotten there yet, but um, I never heard anything about that. I think the guys walked away and they didn't hear anything at all for years <laughs> until they were back in that dressing room and they opened the cupboard and there the pipes were still. And it just kind of, it kind of went on and on. I saw the pipes, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, somebody, we were doing Jimmy Fallon, and somebody on the uh, crew said, oh, you gotta go see these pipes. And I think that was the first time I had seen them. Or maybe it was the Today Show. I can't remember when I saw them. It's a while back. He was drunk. All right. <laughs> there on the aisle. Yes, sir. Uh, are there any unrealized commercial projects that haven't been made that make you make you want to make? Ooh, I was just gonna answer that by, um, this is about unmade Muppet projects that haven't been realized. And uh, the first thing that popped into my head was what I got hired to work on, which was uh, Muppet Broadway stage play. And uh, <laughs> it never happened. It, we, got, we got involved in pilots for ABC, and that sort of led us down the path that led to the Muppet Show. But, um, you know, as soon as I thought of that, I realized, well, we've just done massive shows at the Hollywood Bowl and the London Poetry Arena. Audiences were running like 15 to 18,000 people per show, and that was pretty exciting. I'll tell you, it's totally out of our normal wheelhouse. One take theater with like huge com complex cues and cameras and cuts and teleprompters and you know, special effects cues, music cues. It's a miracle, but they all six shows went really well. Oh yeah, Kirk, Kirk was one of the directors on that. I forgot. Yeah. And uh, our music, music producer, Ed Mitchell, is here. Ed Mitchell is our music guy. 
who we worked with now, well, he did Sesame Street for a long time before I met him, but then when he came out to California and set up a, a recording studio here, um, we started working with him on the Muppets, and it's been, it's been a good long... 47 years. <laughs> <laughs> probably a 50 or 80 years together now. <laughs> anyway, Ed Mitchell, great guy. Yay! Was it me? <laughs> no, no, that guy. Wait, wait. No, no. no, no it was my guy. Which, my guy. Which one's yours? I got the blue shirt. I got the guy behind him. Yeah, yeah. I got the white shirt. Same guy. Besides the ones you guys already mentioned, who were your favorite guest stars that you had on the show? Either on the Muppet Show or the movies that you guys worked on? Who are our favorite guest stars on the Muppet Show or, or anything since? I mean, gosh, they're, they're, first of all, they're all amazing to work with. Like, all of a sudden, you're face to face, or at least face to hand, with these people, <laughs> and and they can really do what they do. A couple of memories for me were Elvin John, way back way back in the seventies, could really play and sing those songs over and over again, flawlessly. Just and every time there was a variation. It was a, you know we all gathered around the piano and rehearsed Yellow Brick Road, Benny and the Jets, and uh, there was one more that we did on the show. Thank you very much, Crocodile. And um, and I just couldn't believe I was this far from him, and he was performing this concert, not just once, but over and over. We were all singing and working together. It was a treat. Yeah. Uh, to uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, amazing. She was like, I think probably one of the first celebrities that I worked with who just worked with the characters. Like her, her focus was just playing to these puppets as if they were real actors in front of her. She wasn't concerned about what was happening down below or anything like that. She was just so in the moment. I just remember that, I just remember. And yeah, she's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Dave Grohl, um, <laughs> Jack White recently, that was a fantastic movie. Really uh, our live shows where, where our special guest was uh, Bobby Monahan from SNL, yeah. and he is just a thrill to work with. He's so this, this big beating heart. He's just a lovely guy. Yeah. There's no. I'm, I'm just thinking of the people. Billy Crystal. I mean, there's just so yeah. many. Billy Connolly. Billy, Billy Crystal. Crystal. It, it goes on and on. Let's start with the Billies. <laughs> <laughs> we could be here all night. But the, 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 the privilege of just getting to drive to work and get out of the car and go work with these people is uh, almost beyond imagination. Crazy. But right up on the balcony there. Yes. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, were there? Which, which night were you there? Oh. Yeah. It was it was really a charge to do. I mean, it's just something we we never see an audience. Do you do you have a favorite Muppet character? <laughs> Is it animal? Well <laughs> <laughs> oh, done. Oh, back there, white teacher. Way back. Uh, two questions. One, Bill, what did your wife's aunt think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I, 